Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time we're slicing up this walnut log on my homemade bandsaw mill back there. So I'm going to be slicing this thing up into thin slabs. That's a product that my friend Eric and I are working on developing. If you didn't see my video where I cut the biggest log I've ever had on my saw, and the log that Eric also brought over, check that out. I showed that process as sort of an introduction. So this log was off of Eric's property as well. So I went by and picked it up about a week ago. Pretty uh, simple and easy loading process. Just got it up onto the trailer and hauled it back here. Well, taking a quick walk around here, we do have a triple crotch kind of thing going on here, a three limb kind of thing going on here. I also have a smaller old limb down here, which should produce some more figure. You can actually see this, uh, this is a curl right there. So that would produce some curl figure in that area. So that should be pretty cool. Down here at the butt, we're about 30 inches wide, so it's a decent sized log, and we're about uh, what is this, like eight feet long or so. Probably get up to about four feet or so here at the crotch, but we'll take a look at that a little more when we get up there on the mill and start sawing it. <laughs> now, looking at the orientation of this thing, they, they, these are always the hardest logs to kind of decide on which way to cut because there's three planes that you can cut in to expose the crotch figure, so any of this triangle type action. So I'm thinking this is the plane that I want to cut in. So I'll have to do a little bit of rolling with this thing to get that face down onto the sawmill bed. So I want to prep this thing a little bit so it's a bit easier coming off the trailer. Then we'll bring this log over to the mill and skid it off onto the bed of the saw. All right, this thing's light. Like a baby. I No problem. Oh, we're caught on. Oh, that limb. Never say no way. <laughs> Never say no way at Matt's I don't really kid around too much. No. Boom. Rolled Holy over. Moly, look at this guy go. <laughs> Alright, so here is how the log is laying on the bed right now. So you can see there is a natural taper in this log, which is actually just part of this crotch as it goes up, which we're going to be removing. So down here, you can see these limbs aren't really pushing this log down. They're not like lifting this end up. So I'm not going to bother leveling things out to even at the taper because really the only area we really truly care about is this section down here. So we're parallel to the center of a tree down there, so we're good there. And uh, you know, since we're not going to mess around too much today, I'm just going to go through and make the first cut to remove all the waste so we can get to cutting our thin slabs right away. And after that cut, we'll go ahead and put a new blade on here. The blade that's on here has been used on a log already. It's getting a little bit dull. So after that first cut, we'll put a new blade on and we'll see how long, I guess, a new blade lasts, making a lot, a lot of slices. That's good. Take a look at this guy and get some uh, dimensions on here. Well, that's a uh, that's pretty gorgeous. This is kind of a goofy shape, which is kind of fun. We're at uh, 24 through here, so about 24 through here. So you got about three feet at two feet wide, and you kind of get tapered down to a foot or so. That's really nice. Take a look at this kind of starburst pattern up here where the crotch was. So because we're cutting sort of perpendicularly to the crotch, the limb is coming up towards us. Now we have this type of figure, the other type of crotch figure at the top here. And we kind of got our bullseye kind of pattern thing going on there. Really, really nice. 
Now one thing you'll notice with the walnut, if you haven't seen this sawn before, is the first time it's sawn like this, it comes out pretty green, and then as it oxidizes here, in a few minutes, it'll turn more of that brownish purple color. So we've made seven cuts already, and we're into more of the wider stuff now, which we'll take a look at in a second. But what we're doing here is Eric went ahead and made me a nice little lumber scale here, so these tick marks will yield a half inch thick board. Because you can't come down on the scale and just go every half inch, because it does not account for the thickness of the blade. So to actually make a half inch thick board, you have to come down six tenths of an inch, the half inch thickness that you want, plus one-tenth for the blade curve. So that's kind of where we're at right now. We have a good little system going. So let's get some water and take a look at this. All right, we're getting some more of this kind of crotch figure on top there. So this one does, this log does have a structural defect here in the middle, which is kind of a fun element of this. And since these are gonna get stuck down to, you know, whatever substrate they're gonna be used with, it's not gonna be a huge deal. But the cool thing is here, we're pretty wide. We're over two feet, so you got whole two foot wide panel here that you could glue down without doing any epoxy fills around it. Or you get a pair of them and uh, you got the 48 inches wide. So you get the whole sheet of plywood with uh, two of these little slabs. So we're at uh, eight feet here. So yeah, yeah, it's looking good. Let me get the uh, close ups and then we can get back to sawn. So there is the grain we got going on here. And then we got that nice figure on top of the crotch there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull another five to seven more cuts, which should take us down into this little tiny limb here. And then after that, we'll be into the real crotch area. This is just the garbage. Yeah, these are the trash <laughs> This boards. is the trash boards. <laughs> Firewood. Okay, five. So we just cut five more. So we are, uh, what, two and a half, three inches with the kerf into the log further. So we should have a little more things to look at. Oh, some crotch figure down here. Whew. That wasn't too bad. It's one of my better ones. Trick shots, water edition. Oh. That's pretty neat. This limb, this little tiny limb is gonna give that us some adds, nice stuff. Does, that adds a lot of character to it. It's got a little bit of crotch figure with this bark inclusion from the small limb which pairs nicely in this case to this bark inclusion up here. Just kind of 
a cool grain and shape in this one. So that's kind of what these ones are going to be looking like. There's not going to be a whole lot of difference between each slab. Let's pull some more and get deeper into this log. Nineteen cuts. Nineteen, man. All right, let's take a quick peek and see uh, what we got. Cause now we're getting into the actual crotch figure, which I am, uh, of course, very excited about. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. There are some crazy cool bark inclusions down here where that little limb used to be. Oh. A nice band of crotch now. Look at that. Let's take a look. So first of all, check out what's going on around here. There's some crazy cool swirls and stuff happening all around here. Gorgeous. They come into this little bit of crotch figure with this band of, uh, well, this bark inclusion with a band of crotch figure around it. That's what's going on down here. And, oh, start getting into some serious crotch action up here. And we're not even that far into it yet. We're just getting into it right now because we just started touching this guy. Ho, ho, ho. There's a little bit of a preview of this one as you walk over to the actual stack on the, uh, or the, the log. This is the stack. Look at this stack. Look at all these things. That's a lot of little boards. Let's go check out this guy. Eric, you want to do the honors? I got to get the pail. If I just had a hose, I wouldn't have to. If only you had a hose, you could just spray it down right here. Oh, but there's a magic pail of water sitting over there. Ooh. Ha <laughs> ha. We even got a leaf. Burp. Put that back in there for now. <laughs> wow. That Look at all this crotch. Something there. That is really cool. That's some beautiful figure in this one. So here's a look at the, uh, the band of crotch figure over here. You can have a tape measure. Yeah. There it is. So we got a little bit of a knot thing going on down here with a little bit of figure. What we got for width, Eric? 27 down here, and then up here over three feet. So, ain't bad. That's not bad. 
So, uh, I guess you know the drill now. We're just gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat and get song once again. All right, not much left there on the saw. No. Okay, Eric, what's the official count? What? What's the official count? 37. 37 slices. That's a, this is a funny sight. That's crazy. Anyone ever seen that before? <laughs> it's really neat looking down the side. It is. Because they're all upside down, so it's got a little bit of a stagger thing going on. Yep. Look how cool that is. So to answer a couple of common questions, I guess, Normally people ask how long these blades last and if I hit a, like a nail or something, obviously that's going to throw things off, but we've made 37 cuts in this log with this one blade. So that's, and it's getting a little bit, uh, it's getting a little tired now. So this is probably where you would probably switch out this blade normally, uh, especially if you're going to be cutting this wide. It's not too bad down there, but up here when you get into this wider crotch area, it definitely seems to be kind of lagging. So I call that kind of your typical actual blade life for one of these blades and these are just some basic carbon steel blades that are $48. The other question I normally get is, don't you get tired cranking on that real thing all day doing it? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I feel fine. That was uh, 36 cuts in about, you know, two, three hours or so, pretty much cranking the whole time. My arm feels like I haven't done anything today. So it's been a few days since we cut this log and now it's time for me to take this thing over to Eric's place and we're gonna put something into his vacuum kiln. And then a few days later, once they were dry, Eric had them surface on a wide belt sander and from that point we had them back in his shop and we laminated them down to some pieces of plywood so we can use them for some sample projects. And from those sample pieces of plywood here is the first sort of uh, prototype project out of those. This is a book mesh pair that is now a conference table. So this thing is roughly four by eight. It is amazing. It is from two slices that are book matched and the seams and everything look amazing. What is also really interesting about this is we have a grain wrap around all four sides. So using the miter fold blade that Andy Klein invented and it's available at Rockler, we were able to fold down the edges of the plywood to create a thicker look. This one here is three inches thick. One of the really cool advantages of this is you have a really wide look here and you have a lot of stability. There isn't really much wood here, it's almost the plywood, so you don't have any of the inherent issues with solid wood 
and movement. And it's a little bit lighter, of course, than being a solid thick piece of wood because it is only about an inch thick down there in the middle, not along the faux edges, which is really cool. So we have a really nice steel base on this one and uh, super pumped about this. Taking this concept one step further, you can do an even thicker wrap. So Eric has an example here of a lift top desk. That one has a six inch fold on it. So it has a look of a six inch thick piece of wood and it's on a really cool lift top mechanism. Now, not to be completely outdone, you can take the five sided wrap a step further and using the miter fold blade again, you can fold all five sides, but throw out the ends and put a little bit of end grain on there. So these are some more kind of prototyping examples of slab skin end grain, which is uh, another thing that I am even more excited about. So all of this is taking us through a lot of initial prototyping and uh, I don't know, kind of just figuring out the process type of things. So all this has been an amazing proof of concept and you'll definitely see more of the slab skin type stuff here in the future here on the channel. At the very least, I'll be making some slab skin projects, which I'm very excited about. So hope you're excited as I am about slab skins. And uh, <laughs> it's just, it's crazy thinking this was just a, a log that I sliced into a bunch of little slices just a few months ago. And now it's these amazing projects, uh, which, you know, it's true of any project that I do. I slice a tree up and turn it into something, but the turnaround time on this is so fast that it's just uh, even more mind blowing. So hope you're excited. I am. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If any questions or comments on slab skins or anything back in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.